from the Swedish Genealogy Guide. I'm Jeff Morris, and in this lesson I'm going to read through a Swedish birth and christening entry from 1752. This example comes from Hannas Parish in Kristianstad County, and the entire entry has been written in the Gothic style of cursive handwriting. I'm going to introduce you to a couple tools that will uh, make that easier. Let's get started. In looking at these open pages, we see that there are some days and months with these lines that were written to separate one entry from another. Let's look at one of them a little closer. So I'm going to zoom in. The first word that we see is the word fudda, F-U-D-D-A, which is birds. And the next word is a Latin word, anno, A-N-N-O, which means in the year of. So, in the year of 1752. The next word that we see is E-M-E-L-L-A-N. Now, to look up what this word would mean, I'm going to use the Swedish Historical Dictionary Database. So, I go to the homepage of the Swedish Genealogy Guide. I click on Dictionaries, and then I click on Swedish Historical Dictionary Database, SHDD. I scroll down and I'm just going to type in the root of the word. This database is built upon a dictionary so it doesn't have all the forms of a word but it does have all the roots. So we'll put an E-M-E-L and then I'm just going to click on search. We scroll down and we see the word Imelan which means between or betwixt. Let's uh, go on. So the next word is abbreviated. It's a letter D, which stands for den, meaning on or that. And then we see 24, meaning the 24th. And the next word is ok, O-C-K, which means and. And then the 25th. The next word is J-A-N-N-U-A-R-I-I. -I which is Januari for the month of January. Now, there's no standard spelling in this time period, so this is just how he chose to um, spell January. And then the next word is Blev, B-L-E-F, which means um, was or became. And then we have the father's name, Jon, J-O-N, and then it's Jöron Sons, so j o R O N. And then we see this abbreviation on the ending for S S O N. And in Swedish, the male patronymic names always end with S S O N. The next word is S O N for son. And then the next word is foot. F U D D, meaning was born. And the next word is ok, O C K, which means and. And then the next word is duptus, D-U-P-T-E-S, which means was christened or baptized. And then we have the abbreviation for den again. So it's just a D with this symbol right next to it, which means on. And then we have the 26th. And then the word after that is a Latin word, ditto, which means ditto, or in this case, it's referring back to January. So let's look at the uh, meaning here of the words up to this point. So the entry means between the 24th and the 25th of January was born Jon Jöronsson's son and was christened on the 26th of January. The next word is is K-A-L-L-A-D-T. Now I know the word begins with a capital letter K based on previous experience. I'm going to show you another tool here that would help you to decipher um, the Gothic handwriting when you come across words that you can't really uh, figure out what it is. So I go back to the Swedish Genealogy Guide page. I click on links. I scroll down to the section for handwriting and I click on Gothic Handwriting Tool. 
And then I just type in what I see in the record. K-A-L-L-A-D-T. And if I move this so that I can see the two overlapping, you can see that this is actually a pretty close match of how the word is spelled. And the nice thing about the Gothic handwriting tool is that you can try to type in the letters based on what you can see. And then if it's not a good match, then try another letter that it might be. And you just repeat that process until you find a good match that looks really good. Okay, so the, the word here is kalad, which means was called. And then we have the child's name, which is per. P-A-R. The next word is gud modren. So it's G-U, and we've got a mark over the U to help us identify that. D-M-O-D-E-R-E-N, which means godmother. And then her name is Sherstina, K-I-E-R-S-T-E-N-A. And this guy did not write her last name. Instead, he wrote the name of her husband, which is Jöns Persson. And Persson has been abbreviated. And then we have the word Hustru, H-U-S-T-R-U, which means wife. So Shestana is the wife of Jöns Persson. The next word we see is Fadrana, which means godparents or witnesses. F-A-D-D-R-A-R-N-A. -D -D -R -R and this guy wrote the names of the male godparents on one side and the female godparents on the other. So uh, we see the word Manshun, M A N. K -u -n, which means the males. And underneath that, we have the names Per Nilsson, Olof Lasson, which is an, a, a variation on the name Larsson. And then we have the word Dreng, D R A N G, which means uh, an unmarried man or a uh, male servant. And his name is Hans. Christianson, um, which we see here, C-H-R-I-S-T-E-N-S-S. -S. On the other side, we see the word Kvinshun, Q-W-I-N-K-U-N, and uh, meaning the female godparents. And the first one we see has an abbreviation in front of it. P-I-G, which is Piga. So that's a sing unmarried woman um, or a female servant. And her name is Ingar Olof's daughter. And then we have another Piga. And her name is Buel, B-O-E-L. And then her name is, her surname is Hans Dotter. With that, we are done. I hope that this has been helpful to uh, show you how to read this Gothic handwriting and um, that with practice, this will, will get easier for you. If you appreciate this content, uh, please give it a like or share it through one of the social media channels. Thank you.